In this one, I'm going to restore an old 5-tube ACDC radio. This is the Rogers Majestic RM502, and this is an All-American 5 design using the classic 5-tubes. I have here a Rogers Majestic AM radio. This is a standard broadcast. The uh, logo is broken where it said Rogers Majestic, but it is. Um, this is a, an old tube radio. This would be an All-American 5, as it was called, because uh, it uses the five standard tubes. 35W4 uh, rectifier tube. 12BE6, 12BA6, 12AT7, and a 50C5. And there is the model number. Pat did 1938 to 1954, so this is going to be probably a late 50s, early 60s model, I would think. And um, let's pull the back off this one and take a look at it. Pull the chassis, and uh, we're going to restore this, replace capacitors and stuff that have gone bad. So I'm going to get into here and remove the knobs. And if I take the knobs off the front, these two screws on the bottom will pull the whole chassis. The knobs should just pull off like that. Okay, the knobs are off. Let's turn it on the side, remove the screws, and remove the chassis. chassis to lift out now, with the exception of the speaker. Here is here's the chassis. Oh yeah. Wonderful. Look what someone did to this capacitor. Someone's changed that and just kind of zap tied one in place. That's really well done. Okay, here's our tuning capacitor and our tuning indicator. As you can see the dial cord is still in good shape. We have a spring on here that keeps the dial cord under tension, but uh, let's get the bottom off of here. Oh, the screws are already missing. Two of the screws are missing, so down to three screws. Of course, they'd use a number one screwdriver for that one. This is probably the same screwdriver that I used when I took the last radio apart that I had like this, a Woodward's Uni Driver from the good old Woodward's department store. They were one of the first um, in Canada to close their doors, or was it Eaton's? We had Eaton's, Woodward's, The Bay, and Sears, and right now the only department store that actually remains in operation in Canada is The Bay, which is uh, HBC. The oldest company in North America, and they have lots of holdings like Saks Fifth Avenue and Saks Off Fifth and stuff. Those are uh, People don't realize that, but they're actually owned by HBC Canada. But we had Sears, we had Eaton's, we had Woodward's, and uh, the Hudson's Bay Company, HBC. Okay, what do we need to change in this thing? It looks like uh, these ones are probably okay, these caps, but for sure, uh, these two butter, these buggers got to go here, and somebody's done this can cap in the bottom, and... Uh, it can probably get uh, replaced, but definitely these uh, Aerovox made in Canada. These uh, these two have to go for sure, and this other cap. This looks like this has been changed actually. This this one here. In fact, I, I would say that's probably for sure that someone's changed this. And what they did is they uh, they wrapped it in paper and then zapped it because the can is going to be negative, and uh, it's isolated from here. This is a hot chassis, right? So with a hot chassis, one side of the power cord is directly connected to one side of the line. So if I put my power cord on here and I touch, right? The aluminum chassis is isolated from power but the can here is not so what someone's done on this one in the past 
is they changed the capacitor and then they just wrapped some looks like it looks like uh, from a from a paper roll looks like a toilet roll that they just cut and they zap tied it around there that's so that it's isolated from the metal bracket that they've got that they've put on here if the original capacitor would have been an isolated one because these these all american fives the if, if you don't isolate that the whole chassis becomes live and depending on what way you plug the power cord in, you could get yourself a nasty shock because you one side of the line and one of these radios was one that I just about electrocuted myself on the one that I bought at the garage sale and the reason for that was because somebody had replaced the main filter capacitor and they used one that did not have an insulator on it. These ones would have been mounted, there would have been an insulator mounted here, right? You can see someone's take it, actually broken it off, but there would have been an insulator here and then a capacitor would have been mounted, isolated from the chassis and someone's come along and they've just, they just uh, had replaced it with a, a regular can where the outside was, was screwed down to here. So the radio that I had, this whole chassis was electrified and of course I, I got a real nasty shock one day when uh, because one of the knobs was broken and I touched the knob when I was touching I touched the shaft for the volume or the tuner when I was uh, resting my arm on a window cell which was a metal frame window and uh, yeah I, I remember that one so I remember how dangerous these things are I think that's when I stopped using it and it got thrown out because when I was that young I didn't understand what a hot chassis was and uh, but I, I, I certainly uh, learned pretty bloody quick and that's why someone who's repaired this has done that but I think I would like to replace this capacitor because it's not going to be a big one I'd like to replace it with one and uh, we'll attach it and put it right in the base here I got lots of uh, caps it's going to not be anything bigger than about a 30 microfarad you know, well 140 volts or 160 volts I doubt this is going to be more than that uh, I got a 450 anyway here so let's just cut this this uh, zap tie off here because I want to see what this original one is. Forty microfarad, one hundred and fifty volts. You see. The, the radio I had, someone's put this bracket on, they've riveted that on and then used that to strap that. But the one that I had, somebody actually attached it to the chassis like that, which is, no, can't do that. You know what? I just measured this one here and this one's probably okay. Actually 178 microfarads. I'm gonna kick the safety up a notch, so I'm going to actually wrap this capacitor with black tape and then we'll put the paper around it and zap it back to this this post here this way I've got two layers of protection because as it was sitting if somebody were to stick their hand in the top when it was energized and touch the top of the capacitor they could get a shock so I want to eliminate any possibility that there's any exposed metal on this radio that could lead to a jolt.
well, that'll protect it. Now there's no chance of getting a shock. And we'll change out those other paper caps on the bottom. I'm pretty sure I've got sizes. I'm getting low on paper caps because I've used a lot of them up recently, but I'm sure I've got a couple of these ones. What are the sizes of these? 0.27 and a, looks like they're both 0.27. I'm pretty sure I've got a couple point so 27s. So let me go dig them up. I have exactly 2.27 microfarad caps, which will go in here quite nicely, and restore this old radio. I like the fact that it uses just a regular 7 watt. You could put a 4 watt in, I guess. Now they make 4 watt bulbs, but uh, incandescent bulb, no fancy little. Uh, 12 volt bulbs. The reason they use a regular 110 volt light bulb on this is because well, this chassis has no transformer on it. This is a transformerless design. The only transformer in here is the audio output transformer. So if, if you look at the, the tubes that it uses, right, 12BE6, 12BA6, 12AV6, I think it was, and a yeah, 12BE6, 12BA6, 12AT6. 50C5 and a 35W4. So how these ones work is the, the, the filaments are all in series. So you've got three 12 volt filaments, which is 36 volts, a 35W4, which is 35 volts. So 36 and 35 is 71, and 50 more for the 50C5 is 121 volts, is what the uh, filament will add up to, the voltage. So they just put all the filaments in series. At one time, Radio Shack used to actually sell the five tube kits, and it was like they weren't that expensive. It was like you know, like four ninety five, and you got all five tubes or something ridiculous. I mean, it was cheap because you go to Radio Shack and you just buy the the five tube kit, and it came with the five tubes. The tube that always failed on this was the rectifier tube, the thirty five W four. That was the one that got the big surge whenever the thing was first started. It would it would get the you see, well, you'll see when this thing lights up, the 35W4 is probably going to light up really bright and then go dimmer. That seemed to be the one that took the hit every time the set was turned on. But, uh, and it will quite often go open filament. Okay, let's change these capacitors out here. See where they go. Lovely. Look at these resistors. Aren't they lovely? This cap goes right down here and to ground. And our outside foil is going to be the side that's going to ground. So we'll just uh, verify which is the outside foil on these ones because I haven't done these ones yet. So let me grab my scope. Okay, I've identified which is the outside foil. I covered how to check the outside foil in another video, so I don't think it's necessary to do it again on this one. something to cut the old ones out. Need something precision to get in there and cut these old ones. So there's one side here. The other side of this one is that one. Made in Canada, Aerovox. Okay, first capacitor is going to go in here. It's going to go down between this and the ground. So I'm going to fish it underneath this lead here because the, the goal is to try and get these in as close to where they originally were as possible.
Now you notice that this is going to the tuning capacitor, but you've also noticed that there are rubber grommets. It's not grounded to the metal chassis, it's grounded to the tuning capacitor. Okay, so we're gonna hook this one up. I just lost my train of thought there. Had my portfolio manager on the phone giving me the good news as to how well investments have been. And then giving me the bad news that he's not gonna be my portfolio manager anymore because he's got a promotion, so. to deal with somebody else going forward. Okay, that's one done. And we'll do the next one here. It always looks funny when you see the AC power cord connected directly to the tube socket, right? Where's that one going? And of course, no fuses because Heaven forbid, we don't need fuses and electronics, right? What's the point? What's the point of having a fuse? Well, to answer that question on these five tube radios, the fuse was actually built in to 35W4 tube. That's why the 35W4, which is this one right here, right? That's this one that the power cord's directly connected to. Um, that's why the cord's connected to both sides of this tube here. Uh, one side's going to be connected to, I guess it's the, it's the plate, and the other one's connected to the filament. And then the other filament's running off of this, and then your B plus, your cathode. But um, this, this tube acts as the, the fuse. So if something goes catastrophically wrong with this, uh, the filament burns up on the 35W4, and then the radio is dead in the water. It kills the power. Okay, let's uh, take that other one off here. My neighbor's getting a hot tub. I wonder what they've been doing all week. They've piles of sand out in front. The guy's working there all week. And beachcomber guys just pulled up with a brand new hot tub all wrapped up.
Okay, there's the two new capacitors replaced here. Make sure nothing's touching. And we can power this thing up. So put power to the unit. See whether it does anything. That's warming up. It hums. Hmm. Wonder why it's humming. Anybody guess? Because it doesn't know the words. This is a. Uh, this one could be bad too. Might want to do this one. I want to change that. Oh, there's one more. I missed this one. There's one more paper cap in here that I got to get at. That I got to change. Looks like this one's been changed. Somebody's been soldering on it. So I got some new caps here. Well, they're not new, they're pulls from power supply units, but they're new enough. We're going to replace this double cap that was soldered in here. It just goes between ground and one terminal. There's two different caps here and the main filter down over here. We'll just replace all of those. I'll just bridge the main filter. That's what I'll do. Yeah, it's those two replaced. We'll nip out this last wire here. For this double cap. And now I've just got the one remaining one. Which will be right here. And I'll just stick this one across the bottom of this other cap. Actually, it goes back to the same junction point here, so.
Oops. Slip there. We'll get that back here. Okay, Metrovetics have been replaced. Nothing will touch. Here's something else unique to these radials. You notice if I turn off the turn on the power with the 35W4 tube removed, the uh, pilot light doesn't light. If I take out any of the other ones, it actually gets brighter because the pilot lamp is wired in series with one of the filaments on the 35W4. 35W4 is in series. It's got two filaments in it, right? One of them is wired. The AC line goes into one. The other one side goes to the light. The other one goes to the rest of the filaments in the circuit. So if the filament goes open on the 35W4, you lose power and the pilot light will also go out to indicate that's because this operates like a fuse. Okay. Don't worry about who's leading the gun. Between Westwood and Hastings, after that you find Tor. This is Swinon. That's the best team in the American League, but it's hard to see them as the first best. Quite sensitive, this receiver. As a 19 year old, but then lose maybe a year when he's 26. Mount Lehman to Clearbrook and then out of Chilliwack. I think but Singh at the moment, not a member of the I. That is a really top end process. So what's the whole profile? I'm Mike Lloyd. Get quality flooring on top. <laughs> For the rich people, but it is a, a, a fun. thing together and uh, see how it sounds once I get the cover on it get the base on it here and uh, we'll put it back in the cabinet and see how it sounds so I've changed I changed all the electrolytics and the paper caps out so we have three new miler type caps in and three new electrolytics I did not change these ones on it although these ones can fail they usually don't but hey We'll see how it works. Let's get the base back on it now. Let's see which goes on where. This goes on like this, I think. Of course, the downside to having the uh, little indicator light connected across the, uh, the 35W4 tube is that if this were to short, it's going to burn that tube out. And I don't know how easy one of those would be to find these days. They were really common back in the day, but uh, nowadays that might be a little more of a challenge to find one. One more screw in the back here. See the power supply on this is rated 117 volts AC or DC. The trick on these is you have to get the dial pointer up in front of the scale. And that's why there's a cutout on the bottom here so that you can get the dial pointer in there. Oops. 
don't think I'm quite in the right track. Maybe I am. Uh, yeah, I'm in the right track. Okay. There we go. My pointer is in place. Dial string, as you say. Dial pointer. And... Obviously, there's speculation here on sanctions being reimposed on you. Okay, here it is. According to As you can see, the dial lights up quite nicely. I've turned some of the lights out in here so that the dial light will show. Her small community has been traumatized. Hey, it's now 5.36 at News 11.30. Let's take a look at your weather forecast. Clear tonight, a low down to 9. Tomorrow, sunny in the afternoon. Cloudy periods. Rain at night, though, in a high of 22. R Ryan might make for a good uh, litmus test here. In Ryan, how old are you now? These are millennials. 24. 17 local states for emergency at the moment. Um, almost 600 people. Deep Cove are no longer handing out plastic straws with the drinks they sell. This is a first for a community in Metro Vancouver. Some independent businesses have done the same. Southbound traffic slowing between Highway 91 and Westminster. In France and the UK have lots of The last thing to do on this is just to position the dial correctly and how that's done is on the bottom here you can actually slide the dial pointer back and forth on the string. So I'm at 1440 so I'll just bring my string down here to around 1440 and we'll check the accuracy for the rest of the ones on the dial here. find our other stations. Eleven thirty. a big part of my journey. Providing expertise to help me grow. Ten forty. Nine eighty, there we go. Seven thirty should be down around here somewhere. Uh, Wanna stick to the Lions Gate if you can somehow manage your way over there. Keeping with the topic of Highway One East bring that down again as Robin mentioned before, a little bit of a slowdown just needs to be willing in the direction of the Fort Man. Doesn't start to eat off the folks in Toronto. Gallardi, that's yeah, really out of the wood there. there. Heavy delays through that strip. Six fifty should be right here. Little engine. Six fifty, yeah. Six ninety, that looks right. Richmond for a change. There's 980s here somewhere. Paper straw, about five times more expensive than plastic. The first bat, all there for the pig. 980. All the back. 1040. Tunnel, you're slowing just north of Stevenson Highway, about halfway to Blendell right now. North right, right there. Fine. No problems for Highway 91 north end. You're just a little slow. 1130. Second southbound. That's right, some sort of 14 pen. Yeah, that looks better. And top end 1700. There we go. All done. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon.